Shalom, Chavarim, Shalom. So here, here, the subject here is that not all Ethiopians are or were, right, were and therefore are Israelites or even related to Israelites. Let's just point this out for the record right here, 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 because there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, how can we call it, like myths, you know, modern myths in a sense, um, or assumptions, but they have been kind of distributed as though they were true. You know, we look at the Kevr and the Gas, we look at the Judeo-Christian, what's called the Judeo-Christian heritage of Ethiopia, you know, with a scholarly academic and at the evidence, a very good book, the book by the late Bernard Lehman, you know, speaking on the Sheba cycle is a good point of reference, going to pick up on that a little bit more. But here, and this is related to some things that Dr. Abi, where he blamed black Americans, I and I Judahites for our victimization. How dare he? But then it brought to mind, really, <laughs> again, what's right about the 12 tribes chart, right? I think a lot of us know some things might be wrong, but what is right about it, right? But here, the subject matter here is that not all Ethiopians are or were Israelites. And this goes along with, we call this like the, the, the sub point, right? A related point I like to bring forward. And that is concerning, right? Not all Ethiopians are Israelites. That's the, that's the major, you know, that's, that, that's the main point. And then this whole thing about slavery. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, some very interesting things when we observe what's going on, you know, when we look at it, you know, with an objective eye, from an objective perspective. I just sort to kind of bring this one forward right here, that not all, some believe, like if we look at the Kebrenegas, for example, right, the Kebrenegas, the, the, the glory of the kings, right, another documentation, whether, you know, they're considered legendary or not, you know, there's a lot of evidence that supports something went on. Right? Something went on. There was an Israelite, clearly an Israelite presence right on the continent, the continent they now have renamed the pseudonym Africa. Right. And also we talk about the, you know, from east to west, uh, you know, from east to west, you know, the you know, you heard about the trans. They call it the transatlantic. Now, we always strike that down because the ocean wasn't called Atlantic Ocean, the Ethiopian Ocean. But we've been talking the transatlantic or the trans, you know, across the ocean. What about across the continent? Across the continent. See, Ethiopia has many, many tribes. There's many tribes in Ethiopia. Right? Many different tribes. And because there's many different tribes in Ethiopia, we could ask the question, are all the tribes in Ethiopia of the tribe of Judah? No, they're not. Are there all the different peoples and provinces? This is the thing that we have to know. Right? When we speak about we not behold the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. When you speak about the Beta Israel, right? the Beta Israel or the Ethiopian Jews, they also represent certain tribes some say that the tribe of dan that's what we heard and there's also um alternative views but regardless of exactly which one it is right now that's not the point of this particular vlog we just want to say that not all this is a message to a lot of our rastafari people and even others that get caught up is as as it says about the israelites in romans um those are romans i think this is the romans chapter Mm, was 11 around around thereabouts chapter 11 i think it says um they have a zeal many have a zeal you know get over zealous you know you get hyped we say one to get hyped you know you get hyped about something but they're not right in that something and this is one of those hold on for a moment get our sword this is one of those key points right so what we need to do is we study you know this generation especially of Ethiopian Hebrews and I now the royal order and also Rastafari and Rasta, you know, those Rastafari that truly carry that name with any honor or respect, right, to the namesake. What do you need to study? We need to study to show ourselves approved. So this is to basically just clarify something that already should be understood. And some will make it sound like, well, you're not telling us anything. We know that. No, you really don't know that. Right, if you if you really did know that, here we go. It's um, Romans chapter eleven, verse. Um, well, it's, it is it is chapter eleven, but the verse that we was looking for actually is over here in chapter nine. This first verse, so it says, "For brethren, let's get, go from the top, chapter ten. 
right, the apparent failure of the promises to Yisrael, to Israel, explained by their unbelief, the failures of the promises. Here we have some of our patriarchs, right, in what we would call our core. This is, this is where we, our roots, right, the royal order of the Ethiopian Hebrews after the order of Melchizedek, commandment keepers, congregation of the living God. Right? This, is, this is where we um, have our groundation. It's, it's a kind of the point right here. I know people can go before it. We can go all the way back to, to, to creation based on a narrative in HaTorah. But for purposes here, it's important for us to restate a point that should already be clear and obvious that not all Ethiopians, and we say Ethiopians in the modern sense of what may be referred to as a nation state, once an empire. Ethiopia was once an empire, right? And being an empire means as many different provinces and peoples. This is why the title, right? The title of King of Kings. You know, when ones and ones speak about the title of King of Kings, right? King of other, there were other kings of their respective tribes, their tribe, their particular province. Actually, in the Gutas, when we start to study the Gutas, it actually refers to it as, um, like from the Gutas and the archaic Amharic, the different provinces, like the different nations. Actually, that, that's the word right there, nations. So there were various different nations, right? But that particular, we could say, ruling nation, right, with both the um, ruling and reigning, or reigning and ruling, right? Ruling and reigning, reigning and ruling nation, or basically was that remnant of the Israelites, right? We've not behold the lion of the tribe of Judah, right? We have 1,000 from each of the 12 tribes of Israel, according to the Kepler and the Gass, right? And see, if we take the Kepler and the Gass, right, as a document, a manuscript that one say, was accepted as being true from such a time, right? And there's strong evidence that verifies it, but we have to get into the study, you know, the study, that, once again, just to mention that book by Bernard Liebman, right? And give thanks to the Chabarim, right? That had actually got copies. A few of the brothers, Hela, you know, had got a copy of it and reading it and even recommended that, you know, that, that all Rastafari, I say, all Hebrews, all Israelite, all Rastafari, like every, everyone should read it, but especially our peoples, right? Our peoples and whatever camp or banner of our people. The key thing is our people. You know what I'm saying? The key thing is our people. But here, 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 it says this, Brethren, my heart says I in prayer to Elohim, or Exiavihir, if you please, for Yisrael is that they might be saved, right? They might be saved, we might be preserved, might get the victory. I come from victimization to, to victorization, right? And this is why they're trying to kill the movement, right? This movement, this awakening, this resurrection and awakening of the Israelite consciousness among we, the black and the brown people, right? And as Naya Binga, Binga said, deaf to black and white down presses. Does that word have any resonance with um, the nowadays generation of, of Rastafari, the Utes? Right? We got to teach the youths the truth because now we're dwelling in the social media thing, right? And there's some things that people are talking about, some things that people are not talking about, the real, you know, the real truth, you know, people are not talking about. And then we're hearing these things that become like little mythologies, like modern mythologies, it, it, fables, actually like fables. And that, it has no place in it whatsoever. Like one saying, well, the Ethiopians are the new Israelites, uh, no, not, 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 not in that sense. As a point of reference, yes. Right? As a point of reference. Even in the verse of Amos 9 and 7, are ye not as the children? Now, I have a brother in just a heal up, Ross John, for I love your book. We're not just saying this about the I book. His book is called Ethiopia, the New Israel. The facts that he compiles and writes and has researched and put in there are facts that we need to have on the record and we support that right there. We're not speaking about that because I think it's clear even when we get into detail. You know what I mean? So, Israel. Right? Speaking about the Israelites, right? And speaking about the Ethiopia's historical testimony, right? Based on just the witness, based on the evidence. Right? We wasn't there, but we say, okay, let's just accept, like we accept so many other listen, ones accept Roman history and Greek history as true. Have you ever seen them do a DNA on the body of Julius Caesar? 
Have you seen him do a DNA on the body of Alexander, Alexander the, the Greek, the Great, or any of these people? You know what I'm saying? Nobody talk about the fact that there's more manuscripts for the Old and New Testament, right? Ancient manuscripts, and there are manuscripts combined for Greek and Roman history. There's more manuscripts. In fact, a lot of the Greek and Roman history, you know, the things that we believe and are made to believe about Greek and Roman Western Gentile history, a lot of these things are based on a couple of manuscripts, right? And some of these manuscripts, the oldest copy is way after the events that took place. But none of y'all are doubting that so-called the Greeks and the Roman history, you see what I'm saying? It's, it's that home field, I guess, advantage. Oh, no, it's Stockholm Syndrome, not home field advantage. When we're talking about Ethiopia, well, that's home field advantage. But we're talking about, you know, the condition of the lost, the lost, the lost sheeple, right? That right there is Stockholm Syndrome. But not all, not all, not all, not all, not all Ethiopians are Israelites or are descendants of those historical Israelites, Right, of Ethiopia. Mm. Can you accept that as being true? Do we have to go into detailed documentation? It's a very simple, simple documentation. Right? The evidence of the lion of the tribe of Judah and that historical, right, that historical rulership and reign right, in the tops of the mountains, you know, the area biblically, prophetically says, Im Kush Ze Yulad Sham in the Hebrew, Im Kush with Kush. Zeulad, this one was born there. So we know that Ethiopia comes into the equation. Are you not as the children of, right? Are you not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? There is some correspondence, but one necessarily is not the other. Now, just as we had Joseph, you remember Joseph and Moshe, and we had the Israelites when they were in, in Egypt. And that's a whole different situation. Right there, but even there, we know that you know people. You know people do what people do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like Moses. You know what happened to 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 Miriam? Miriam, she had a problem with Moshe. Right? Moshe and his uh, Kushit, Kushawit, his Ethiopian wife, and she caught, you know, she caught um, the tsaraat. I, what some call leprosy or skin affliction because of the motzi ra'a, the motzi ra'a, because she spoke evil, hurtful, unkind. Right? She spoke unadvisedly. So this was one and one and one into like Abi, Abi, Dr. Abi, the prime or the prime minister over there. We're gonna get into this article that he, you know, wanna blame so called black, you know, Americans, aka pseudonymous, you know, African Americans for our own victimization. Right? Then then how dare he try to compare us and say that what we went through, we as black people over here in 400 plus years, and what the European Jewish Ashkenazi and other European Jewish groups went through is the same thing. I mean, it's, it's a wonder that some of the Jewish groups didn't call, the white Jewish groups didn't call them out on being anti-Semitic. But hopefully, stay tuned, stay tuned. We'll follow up on that. This is the subject matter here, but it's related, right? Not all Ethiopians. Right, are Israelites or were? Let us first deal with the history. Were Israelites, even from the Kevrat Neges narrative, 1,000 from each of the 12,000 firstborn males which accompany Dawit the second, you know, or Dawit, uh, Dagmawi Dawit, uh, Ibn Ben Hakim, um, Abayna Lechem, you know, some of the other names that he was known, but chiefly he was known from, you see, the Israelite perspective as David, as David II, right, as David II. Now, he's the same one known as Minulik I, Keramawi Minulik, right, and also as the son of the wise man, Ibn Hakim or Ben Hakim, right, the son of the wise man, because Solomon, Solomon was the wisest man. <laughs> some say he never knew the secret. Of a woman, you know, that's that tune right there, 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 classic tune, roots reggae tune. But that there proves even when we read the narrative, according to Kevin and the guests, and when they had returned to Ethiopia, right, the 1,000 from each of the 12 tribes, so 12,000, right, along with the son of Zadok, right, the Zadok connection, Zadok, which in the Hebrew means righteous, that son of Zadok, the high priest, right, the priest was. Azaria. Right? It's interesting how Azaria, when we look at the, the canonical Bible narrative, even the Zadokite priests, is very significant when we look in some of the prophetic books about the restoration 
of the Zadigite priest, a Zadok. You know, we say Melchizedek, Zadok, Zadok, Zedek, right? There's a connection there. I point that out because the, 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 the absence in the biblical narrative, and it's like ones who are mentioned in the narrative, well, when we say the Bible, and then we look at the Kevin and the guests, we see some of these same individuals and persons, they seem to just disappear. <laughs> and then we see this priesthood, right, reappear later on, almost like 400 or some years, right? we see, see a reappearance. This means that they must have gone someplace before the whole apostasy of Shlomo HaMelech, Solomon the king, right, and a portion or a remnant Right? The, the remnant, remember it says the, the remnant, the residue, like the remnant, a remnant had returned. Right? So that also there is in the book by Dr. Bernard Lehman. Right? This particular book by Bernard, Dr. Bernard Lehman. Right? Let's just, um, yeah, yeah, get the name here. Queen of Sheba and Biblical Scholarship. Queen of Sheba and Biblical Scholarship check out the video on Rastafari Jews and also elsewhere, but the Queen of Sheba and Biblical Scholarship by the late um, Professor and Dr. Bernard Lehman. Well, he just says Bernard Lehman, but I think he definitely, you know, at least in our estimation, his work is a very exhaustive scholastic work that there's much to follow up on. There's a lot that we have followed up on, what we've been able to follow up on. It is really, it, it, it really brings forth the truth of the matter and also some other aspects, right? The other half of the story, right? Okay, hold on for a moment. Yeah, the other half of the story that is, and that has not been told. And this is the half of the story too, that not all Ethiopians, Ethiopians have many, many tribes. Let's see if we can bring this up right here, just to do, do this right here, all right? let's go over here and is this the page now this is this is this article we would like to do a video in and of itself from ethiopia insight right here why did ethiopia's prime minister blame african americans for their victimization well it could be and give thanks uh to zayak isupk for this one right here but say what do you agree well yes we agree where it's agreeable <laughs> definitely definitely that right there 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 it's a very interesting article and it could be, right, that, you know, that guiltiness, if you think about it. The article is very well written. We like the points made. Asifa Jalata. Thank you, Asifa Jalata, for this particular article right here, right? We're going to hopefully touch on this in and of itself. But this is kind of like, this is kind of like puts into context the point we're making right here, 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 right? And, um... Ethiopia is not a monolith. This is what uh, the King of Kings, go to Maui, go to Maui, Hala Selassie said, a monolith. A monolith means that, you know, it's all made of one stone, all right? Let's ask how many tribes, right? How many tribes? How many languages? How many tribes? Now, that some people don't like to use that, but still it's, it's, it's a working term, right? How many tribes? Now, look right here. Here it says there are 80 tribes. Right. According to this uh, Wikipedia, G is for God and G is for Google. Right. So Google become like the God of kind of information, so to speak. But here, keeping it in context, right, the proper context <laughs> here, it says 80 tribes. Right. Or ethnic groups. Another way, I guess it's a modern way of saying it. So the 12 um, <laughs> ethnic groups of Israel. Right, or remnant, we could say firstborn sons, 12,000 of them entering Ethiopia, according to the narrative we have in the Queen of Sheba and the Queen of Sheba cycle. Now, there is, now Bernard Liebman goes into this more, you know, in his respective work. So I think I want to just pull up on this, but I do want to point to the fact that there's also the Tigra, the Tigra, since the Tigra and Tigray, you know, was in the news. And it's like, it's kind of now I'm looking at this from a whole different perspective, even as the uh, first vice president, duly elected Ethiopian World Federation had, you know, was reasoning on this. And he had said to I, um, you know, during this whole crisis, the civil war in Ethiopia, you know, he said that some things that made me look at the situation and also acknowledge that I was vibesing the same thing right there. 
But now, based on what he says right here, it kind of brings to life that this point needs to be made. Because a lot of our people will just see, you know, coming from the West and getting caught up in some of the, the fables that, that might creep in among the true, the true doctrine, true teaching, right, and the true revelation of Rastafari. There's other things that may creep in. We may look at like, oh, the Ethiopians are the Israelites, all of them are the Israelites. No, they're not. They wasn't that when the 12,000 came forward with, with the son of King Solomon of Israel, king of Israel, and the queen of the south, the queen of Sheba, Negis Machida. You know, they wasn't all Israelites then. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They wasn't all Israelites then. Right? And it becomes very clear when we read the narrative. So how all of a sudden, right, even 3,000, 3,600 years between three three plus thousand years, all of them someday become all Israelites. If they all were Israelites, we would have never had the godless and creeping coup, right, against his divine magic, Amari Hala Selassie. We would never had, you know, the great apostasy, right? You know, the great apostasy, right? The great falling away. Scripture speaks about that in Psalm 19. Oh, the great transgression, right? If you study some of the Yehudi, you know, the the Sefer Tehillim, right? There's a footnote in one of the Sefer Tehillim where it says in Psalm 19, it says the uh, great um, transgression. And there's a footnote right there. And this book, particular one, was published during the reign of His Majesty, right? During his visitation. And it said, it said, um, rebellion to the King of Kings. Uh oh. Mm hmm. So many of these other groups that rose up, or many of the ones who rose up, some of them were just like, were, were, how can we say, like the, the Iscariots amongst I and I, you know what I mean? While others were other peoples, right, who had maybe long-standing jealousies or animosities. How could we have, right, these, these Israelites, you know, for more than 3,000 years, right, reigning and ruling over us, all these different 80 tribes, all right, this is why when we say the Lion of the tribe of Judah, we need to understand the significance of that identification. Why is that a link to the original Israelites right, from the time of Solomon and Queen of Sheba? Now here we have 80, 80 tribes. So there's 80 different tribes. Right? You mean we won't find one or 12 there? The descendants of those? We do. Right? Now they say while the exact number is unknown, they sum it up to Samania, right? You know, Gosoch, you know, Gosawoch, Gosoch, Negadoch, you know. There are around 80 tribes or ethnic groups living in Ethiopia. Most of the population belongs to the Amhara or Oromo tribes. Now, you might hear about this old Semitic and Hermetic thing going back and forth. Well, a lot of that has to do with the epicenter of this, right? The epicenter, right? Conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Israelites, the Israelites of Ethiopia, this 3,000 year history, right? You know, as Barhana Selassie, a.k.a. Robert Nesta Marley, better known as Bar Marley, he said like 3,000 years of history, you know, can't be wiped away you know, so easily, right? 3,000 years of history. Now, if you want to get into some of the details, right, of the different peoples, right, the different customs, right? And what's interesting that many of the Europeans, right, Western Gentile, you know, Europeans, whether they were, you know, Roman Catholic or whether they were a lot of white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, and even in the later time, some Eastern European Jews even went there and did their particular researches, you know, on different things, you know, and we can go over some of their research, you know, and, you know, we can vet it as well. This is to point out, you know, the whole thing about the tribes. Now, the Oromos, who are considered, right, to be based on, like, the biblical point of reference and narrative, a Kemetic or Hamitic group, they're the largest, said to be the largest ethnic group in Ethiopia. 34.9% of the population. Now, there's an interesting Oromo and with us over here. They used to be called, and I mentioned this before, but, you know, with respect, you know, they used to be called the Gala. Now, over here, we have a group of people called the Gala. And what's interesting, when we look at different, you know, pictures, historical pictures of the people, we see a lot of correspondence. This is what's very, very interesting, 
right? And then when we understand, you know, some of the history, it becomes clear, at least for us. Remember that a lot of this tribal stuff and tribal war that's going on over there in, in Ethiopia or in even in other parts of Africa does not have anything to do with us directly. Hopefully we can be the peacemaker, right, in such situations, if that be the will, you know. You know, you know, Baruch Hashem, right? But they number about 37 million. They are predominantly concentrated in um, Oromia, right, region in central Ethiopia, the largest region in the country by both population and area. They speak Afan Oromo, the official language of Oromia. Now, there are some cultural things that would have to be kind of, you know, address, right, address elsewhere. That would now here's interesting, right? And we're gonna actually link a biblical, a possible biblical connection with even the the Oromo people, right? We just wanted to make a connection between the previous name, the Gala people, and the Gullah, the Gullah people over here in the Georgia, like Sea Island, South Carolina, parts of North Carolina, because those are some of I and I, you know, peoples as well. Right, and also some of, you know, even ISUPK brother um, Azania was speaking about that and was like, wow, we have that in common right there, there, there. And we already know that they are identifiably also of the same heritage, of the same divine heritage that is that, that we refer to as being Israelitish, right, and Israelite. So there's the Barana and the Barento in Oromo oral history are said to be brothers who were sons of Orma. So there's one named Orma. My father of all Oromos, there's a, a Orma. Now, in the Hebrew, right, and in the Bible, where David got his threshing floor, right, when we start to investigate some of the Hebraics of it, there's an interesting linguistic link with the name. How interesting is that right there? So we just point that out right there. Now, we look at the Amhara. Now, the Amhara, right? Now, its origin derived from a Sabian language spoken by merchants and traders who migrated into Ethiopia from Yemen region. Now, this is, this is what is said. This is not really quite accurate. This is, they had old narratives. Actually, the Amhara are their history. The history says this, that during conflict times when the Ottoman Turks, they're biblically Hittites, right? The Ottoman Turks under the Islamic flag, when they were, you know, seeking to conquer and colonize, you know, that particular region, they were only able to go as far as like the Horn of Africa, the coastal provinces, right? And they also were able to encourage other, how can I say, Semitic black people. When I say Semitic black people, like ones like the Sudanese, they called some people say, oh, they are black, but they call themselves Arabs. But their culture does link to um, pre um, white supremacist um, times of the Gentiles Arabia. So do the people in the Horn of Africa. And many of these people, when they talk about Semitic or Hamitic, you often hear them speak about um, um, Afro-Asiatic or Afro-Semitic or, or Hamido-Semitic or Camido-Semitic or Semido-Hamitic languages. This means that these people and Dr. Um, Bernard Liebman's book also, excuse me, excuse me right here, his book also goes into that as well to show that many of these groups that could be identified by the scholars and, you know, according to certain scholarship, Western Gentile, White Anglo-Saxon Protestant, you know, white people scholarship. I say white people because there's always a spin on it. Rarely do you get, you know, honest um, researchers and investigators, right, that will let the spade be the spade and the late Bernard Lehman, he was one of them. And there are those few, and we like to point them out. But the true um, origin of the Amhara, the Amhara is actually those northern, we could say, people might refer to them as Semitic people and the Sabian connection, but they are linked historically over thousands of years with Tigray, the Tigray people. In fact, actually, if we go back actually to roughly, I think around the 13. 13, 1400s, there were a lot of encroachments. You have to know the history of the region. So certain peoples who were the, you say the royal family, to save the royal family, or those who were, you know, had the claim of the Solomon, the Queen of Sheba, and that descent from those Israelites, they moved southern, 
more southward from the Tigra regions into the highlands. And when they reach the highlands, we could say for, not to get into detail because the Oromos have their perspective and some of them Mahars have their perspective, but from what we have studied, they basically kind of clashed right there. And there was wars, there was also peace, and there was a, a sort of a blending of peoples Right from the Oromos, certain not all of the Oromos, right, and not even all of the Tigris. So actually, we have the northern group of people. So when you combine the Tigra language, right, which is a Semitic language, with the Cushitic or the Hamitic or Kemitic language, right, within those families and that structure that developed in the highlands. So what we get is from the Aksum, the Tigra, the northern historical older regions that we know were connected with the Queen of Sheba and with the Sabian peoples and ruled on both sides of the Red Sea, right? When they, some of them moved southwards and they said that they moved southward because of, you know, the Mohammedan, the Mohammedan threat, right? That was devastating parts of the north, right? And many of the ones who had claims to that divine heritage, you know, either were killed in battle or in other encroachments. And so they sent ones and ones, what was it, Wendem, when, you know, Wendem, um, Seged, I got to get the names. We can get the names of, and this is basically, you know, standard conventional, you know, Ethiopian history, you know, at least the Ethiopian highland. We could say part of the the centrist uh, Judeo-Christian, you know, heritage. We, we we've seen many of the manuscripts and translations, and there's a lot of truth to it. There are some areas that might be debatable, yes, but we point to that right there because this kind of respins it. This spins it around. This twisted it around in kind of some strange ways, right here. This particular, you know, right up right there. Basically, what we get is three main tribes: the Tigra. Right in the north, more of a Semitic people that link with the, we could say, the Israelites of Ethiopia and that heritage, Solomon, Queen of Sheba, um, Ark of the Covenant, you know. And then we have the Amhara, well, then we have the Oromo in the so southern, central, and south regions, right? And the Amhara, ones don't like to hear this said, and, and we know this, but this is how we view it from, you know, the point of view that we can look at the evidence objectively. We're like a blend of these two peoples. And from many of our family, in-laws, and others that we have spoken to, they kind of agree with it, even though, I guess, it really simplifies the view of it. But there's a lot of um, personal history that both sides have in this. I, I like to just point this out right here, because um, although we should study and, and get to know the truth of this matter, there's some issues that they have, you know, that they have to either work out or come to us, <laughs> you know what I mean, you know, to um, mediate or to arbitrate, right? But we should allow them that opportunity. But if anything, we, a lot of the, I and I, Rastafari and others, really sadly don't know what we should really know about some basics of Ethiopian history. And that's because of the fables and other things like Ethiopia is, the Ethiopians are the Israelites and just confusing the whole thing. Right, it doesn't say that. It says, "Are ye not as?" If I had one wife, right, a first wife and children, but for whatever reason, me and that wife could not get along together, and I move on, and I'm married another woman, a wife, the children are still my children, even if me and the mother cannot get along together. So, you know, according to 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 Jah law, right, and and righteous man law, men and women and people law, you know, are my children, but we don't get along. But so I married again. And then I have other children. And so the first children might think that I treat the second children better because they live with me and whatever, you know, direct blessings that I have, you know, they, 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 they get that because they're there. You know, the, the reason we're not together, the me and the first woman, is not because, you know, so much of the children, right, but more because of, you know, people. This is the reason why a lot of folks, you know, are, are single parents or or so-called singles and, you know what I'm saying, nowadays. But I point that out because that is what it's saying in Amos 9 and 7. Are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me? Because as the Israelites, right, in past times became more acquainted with, wait, we have a kingdom, right, 
in 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 Kush, right? In Tob, in Tobia, we have a kingdom in the Etoba Alza, in the good land that we've heard about over there. You know, um, it caused some consternation, as it does even among some of the Black Hebrew and and, and, and Israelites. Even we able to prove that some of the peoples in Ethiopia are directly connected to the Israelites and are our people. But there's the half of the story that has not been told, right? There was encroachments that led to the displacement of populations, right? In East Africa, particularly in the region we call Ethiopia, of Israelites that ended up on the West Coast and that went up, ended up in boats across the trans-Ethiopian slave trade. Some also went to other directions too, but it is known. You need to study more on the Sahel, read about the Sahel. The Sahel is like a super highway, so to speak, right, from East Africa to West Africa, right? And we already know that it's like the Trail of Tears in America, what they did to our native brothers and sisters, how they, how they marched them around. You know what I mean? And we also know how the white man, when he was caught by the Japanese in World War II, he had to march like 80 something miles and many of them died on that. You know what I mean? But we notice among other peoples, though some died, many of them endured, right? And they basically transported people from different parts of, we say, Africa, the continent more better, but you know, what we call today, quote unquote, Africa. You know, the artificial borders, the artificial borders one, that's Africa. You know, with those artificial borders, that's Africa. They transitioned them from east to west, right? So some people have this belief that everybody who went into the, the, the slave trade, all of them just came from, you know, West Africa, right? But it's, it's like any other continent, it's any other big place, nation. You know, there's movement from east to west. We have this Western Gentile belief because many of us might be in areas that we were born in and we reside a long time in these areas. We get to think that, well, other people in ancient times, you know, if they were born in Arabia, they just sat down in Arabia and didn't move nowhere. <laughs> or if they was born in, you know, you know, South Africa, they never traveled, followed the water and made it to, you know, the Horn of Africa. If they was in the Horn of Africa, they never went to the West. Or they was in the West of Africa, they they never went to the east or to the north. People moved around. They didn't have to deal with these visas and all the times of the Gentile stuff. They moved around, right? And how do we know this? We can follow this linguistically. We can follow this culturally. And we can follow this also according to the people's, some of their oral history. Some is oral history. And others have manuscripts, documentation. You know what I mean? Like the Israelites of Ethiopia, which is even makes it more better. Right? Because many of these documents sometimes reserve things that might get lost if it's only based on oral tradition. See, oral tradition means that what the white man did and the enslavers did and also many of the Mohammedan, you know, enslaving Arabs also did, right, was kill off a lot of the elders. The white man did this too. He killed off the elders. If you kill off all the elders, right, and, and it's an oral tradition culture, then you can tell the babies anything. You can, you can lie to the babies. You know, you can tell them anything because the elders will be the ones that normally would pass on like the family jewels, the gems, right, of history, culture and other things that would be necessary, you know, for the people to go forward, right? So I'm going to sum this up right here, 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 right, just, a, just about right here. We, of course, got to bring in a verse from Scripture. So th there's more on this as well. But like we said, that wasn't the main point. The main point is that the tribes in Ethiopia, let's just point this out again, the tribes in Ethiopia that more directly, we could say, um, make the positive claims of uh, Judaic, Hebraic, Israelitish is usually the, the Tigra in the north and the Amhara. The Tigra and Amhara actually historically have a lot in common. Right? I'm talking about when we get to the roots of the matter. In fact, we say the roots or part of the roots of the Amhara people is from the Tigra is from the Tigra people. When we look at the history of the southern migrations, we look at the conflicts and the resolutions and kind of like the, the, the building, the, the, contu uh, the continuation of that Solomonic, Davidic, the throne, the tribe of Judah, you know, all of those, those um, what do they call those nomens, those titles and epitaphs, they're not just ceremonial. 
they were part of an institution, ancient, right? Institution, I can say ancient Israelite institution, because when we look at Ethiopia prior to its becoming a visible kingdom, when it was still a hidden, right, a hidden kingdom, when Ethiopia was still a hidden kingdom, we noticed that the, 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 um, what would they call it, like what, the sociologists, anthropologists, um, a lot of the cultural, you know, ethnic, um, um, you, you, you almost saw the Bible as the first white explorers when they went to, you know, um, Ethiopia and others, but mainly those who were influenced by the Judeo-Christian tradition through their translation of the Bible. When they saw Ethiopia, they basically saw the Bible. They started to make all sort of comparisons. And the great thing is we can go to a lot of these historical documents and point out these comparisons where they were likening Ethiopia to being, especially that Solomonic, Judeo, that aspect. Because there's many other people. Like I said, there's other tribes. So often somebody may show a picture like we just showed you the picture over here, right at the top of the page. Um, let's go back up here. We show you this picture right here. Now, this particular, I would say a woman, Right, uh, you know, sometimes it's it seems close. You have to look up and down, look up and down. But this woman right here, she is not her claims. I could almost say with, with almost a, I'll say 99.9 percent, .9%, my right, certainty is not to the ancient Ethiopian 3,000 year Solomonic Judaic, you know, um, heritage. That's not going to be her claims. Right? It's not going to be her claims, you know, as many of the other 80 or so tribes. But there are those tribes that do make that affirmative, positive claim. And one of those mainly is the Amhara, right? And the, I'll say the progenitor group is the Tigra. This is why when we saw Dr. Abi and his civil war against Tigra, right, and all the Amharas in tow with that, we thought it was very curious. You know, but we do understand that all the poisons that lurk in the mud much hatch out. But as far as reaching our Israelite brothers and identifying who's who, <laughs> we're going to share this verse on the outro right here. Isaiah 45 and 14. We use this verse as um, just like the verse that our other Hebrew and Israelite brothers like to quote when we talk about or when Ethiopia is talked about. They like to go to, um, what's that, Zephaniah? Zephaniah, right? <laughs> Zephaniah. Zaphan, Zephaniah. Right? Mystery, right? Mystery of, of Cha. Right? Zephaniah, was it? It's 212, right? Zephaniah 212, where it says, Ye Ethiopians also shall be slain by my sword. Zephaniah 2 and 12 says, Ye Ethiopians also shall be slain by my sword. In fact, let's just do this right here because I'll say look it up, right? But sometimes when people find that, you know, there's something interesting, right? And somebody's showing you that, then they'll go and look it up for themselves. Here we go, Zephaniah 2, 12. Ye Ethiopians also, ye shall be slain by my sword. Now, the my there is speaking of Jah, Jehovah, Yahweh Sabaoth, right? Who is speaking? Hakadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem. Holy One, bless me. He blessed your name. He is speaking. So, question here what is the sword, right, of Ha'elohim, Ha Elohim, of the true good, the true God, the true power? What is his sword? Well, the Brit Chadasha, the Adish Kidan, Hadish Kidan, it tells us that his, his sword is the word, right? This is why we go to the word, right? to the law and to the testimony if they do not speak like this it's because there is no light not the divine light the true light is not in them right thus saith exiavi the sustainer lotu sepat thus saith yahweh jehovah right the labor right of egypt that's mitzrayim to us in the hebrew right and the merchandise of ethiopia and the Sabians, note that right there. Remember Ethiopia and the Sabians and what we showed you when they said the, the Amhara and they made a Sabian? The Sabian connection is there, but it's really more directly through the Tigra. So it's like the Sabians to the Tigra, the Tigra to the Amhara, right? And the Amhara having somewhat of a blend of the Ordomo, right? Because of their movement to the Central Highlands. But notice here it says merchandise of Ethiopia. That's what we 
the black Jews of the line of the tribe of Judah. Right? And even other Hebrews and Israelites, if we're going to speak with ones and ones and, and seek to do what we can do, you know, because remember, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The content may have been renamed the pseudonym, right? But we definitely have an interest, right? Speaking to the ISUBK and other Israelites, we definitely do have an interest east of the river now. But this, this, this verse here is a key verse. All right, let's just bring it out as best as we can right here. The labor of Mitzrayim and the merchandise of Ethiopia and the Sabians. Note is speaking about three people, groups, locations. Egypt, Mitzrayim or Kemet to many of y'all. Merchandise, merchandise. It's about business, right? Merchandise. We the black Jews. We just say Jews, right? Rastafari Jews, Yehudi, right? Lion of the tribe of Judah, right? Merchandise of Ethiopia. Where's the merchandise? And the Sabian, Sabian, see the Sabian connection, the Queen of the South, the Queen of Sheba, even Robeno, Yeshua, Robeno, and our Rabbi, Rabbi of Rabbis, our Black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, called Jesus Christ, and some say Jesus Christ of the Scripture. What does he say about the Queen of the South? She's going to rise up in, in judgment against this generation, against like the Abi, you know, the Abi, Dr. Abi kind of guys blaming the blaming Judah, blaming Judah in exile, so-called North American Negroes blaming, you know, blaming us first. Is there any one that they blame Haile Selassie first too? The merchandise of Ethiopia and the Sabians, uh oh, the Sabians, men of stature, right, shall come over to thee. You see, this word still needs to be fully fulfilled, right? But it's through this word, who in spirit and in truth fulfills this word, there we find our Israelite, that which is right, our Israelite connection, right? Shall come over to thee, and they shall be thine. They shall come after thee in chains. Uh-oh. They shall come over. They shall fall down to thee. They shall make supplication to thee, saying, Surely God is in thee, and there is none else. There is no God. All right? <laughs> now, many have gotten used to the, you know, la, 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 la. You know, like, like there is no God, but, you know, but, but Allah in that sense. But notice this here, even prior to that. All right? They shall say, Surely El. But notice in the Hebrew, it's El. Now, El is a contraction of Chayil. Chayil. Chayil, also Hebrew for power, for might, right? At the root of the, the not the name, but the title. El and Elohim, right? Chayil and Chaylehim. These are titles, the power, the powers, right? To see the attributes, all the powers, the powers in the singularity of Yahweh, hey, of He who be, we be, ha, kados, buru, buru, ka, Hashem. So here, you see God right here, mighty one, Jehovah, when speaking of the, the God of the Beta Israel, even the Beta Israel of I and I over here in the West, this is who we be, right? So our name is like our brother's name, is Beta Israel, but we're the Beta Israel over here in the West. Here it says exactly what will happen, right? They'll say, surely the Almighty is in thee, not blaming the victim first, Right? And there is none else. There is no, no says there is no Elohim. There's no other Elohim outside of the Elohim that manifests in John's children in Xavier Lijoch. Lijoch Lijoch. Yazare Lijoch and Negafrewoch, right? So here, here, here. As long as one's not saying this, they're not fulfilling the, the, the word. Right? That means they don't recognize the light in I and I. That means they're in the dark. If they're in the dark, they're not Israelite. You know what I'm saying? If they're in the dark, if they can't see that light, that illumination. Now, the fall down and fall down to the, you know, it's interesting the word shacha, right? Yeah, the outer sense is the outer sense of prostration. But, but, but they will be humble, right? Not these little sly ones and ones. But they're the same ones, part of the creeping coup, right? You know, against his majesty, right? They're the same ones, the godless and creeping coup. Right? They, 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 they mess things up from 1975 to the present time. Right? But that's a whole other matter right there. And make supplication to thee. Make supplication. Pala. Now, there's one other item, if I may, brothers and sisters. I know this is almost like trying to keep it within, you know, a timing. Right? Like to share this right here and then follow up on it more. Because the only other black peoples, right, 
that could come over here to the Americas, right? Let's just sh show you this here at the top as well. Not only are black people that could come over here like freely to the Americas, right? Until like say 1965 was the Ethiopians. The Ethiopians, right, were the first black peoples that came over because of us black peoples, but in a whole different way than the tragedy that happened to us in the beginning of the fulfillment of these prophetic words. I'd like to show you something right here, here, here. Stand by, stand by.